Uh, about right now, uh, Virginia, Virginia State Senator uh, Louise Lucas, I'm sure uh, she is singing Luther's Bad Boy. Having a party. Because um, Governor Glenn Youngkin, Republican, he announced with big fanfare they were going to build this $2 billion arena complex in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, and going to lure the Washington Wizards and the Mystics and the Capitals out of the District of Columbia. They were going to create this, uh, this uh, exclusive hotel where they said rooms were going to average 700 bucks a night and an amphitheater and all this shops and all this sort of stuff on the 12-acre area. That sucker dead. Uh, because uh, State Senator Virginia Louise Lucas, who's over the money, said, no, nah, we ain't funding this. Uh, and uh, sh the, the governor, boy, he was, he was talking about her and he was dogging her out. And she was like, I'm going to show you the hand. He learned real quick, you might want to bring in that black woman on the front end of the process. She posted this on Twitter, y'all. She said, as Monumental announces today they are staying in Washington, D.C., we are celebrating in Virginia that we avoided the monumental disaster. Thank you to everyone who stood with us in this fight. Now, here's the deal, okay? So Ted Leonis, who owns the Wizards, is a billionaire. There are other investors in the team who are billionaires. I've always said, why are cities building palatial arenas for billionaires that are only driving up the value of the team? So if they sell, the only person that benefits is the billionaire. That was Louise Lucas's position. She said, wait a minute, why in the hell are we gonna sit here and screw taxpayers and taxpayers are on the hook for the bonds to pay for this stuff, and it's on us. <laughs> Somebody did this graphic, and uh, she posted it, uh, uh, F-A-F-O. F around and find out. And so you see, I, this is one of the most hilarious uh, of, of graphics. <laughs> so they put somebody, they put a, a, her head on somebody's photo uh, next to a grave, and the headstone said, Yunkin and Leonis' $5 billion arena uh, with her throwing the peace sign uh, with the image. That is absolutely hilarious. Now, D.C. Uh, announced a $515 million deal uh, that uh, they, the city council is going to vote on next week uh, to keep the team uh, in the city. And, uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to create this office, excuse me, uh, the place next to uh, the next to their current arena uh, is going to create this place for them to be able to uh, have retail space and stuff along those lines. And so now uh, Leonis is, you know, seeing the praises of the deal. Um, I don't even like that deal. I'm going to go to our panel right now. And, you know, Scott, the, the reason I don't like that deal is because, listen, they're trying to spin it as, well, the capitals and the widgets, they're so important to downtown, the redevelopment or whatever. But let's be clear. Um, if the ca if the capitals if if you if that's your venue, pay for it your damn self. I, I just I just I have a problem with taxpayer dollars, and and we see this all around the country where they play on the emotions of people. Oh my God, we're gonna lose our teams. Our teams like what are we without professional teams? Well, there are a lot of great cities in America without professional uh, 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 sports teams. But this is yeah. how this is this is how billionaires. This is how billionaires pimp cities, and this is how billionaires get, they love to talk about welfare, this is how they love getting handouts and corporate welfare under the guise of economic development. Yeah, Roman, you know, as former head of the D.C. Chamber of Commerce, I, I, I worked on the deal that brought the Wizards from suburban Maryland 20-plus uh, years ago. I get it. I hear what you're saying, but there is great economic benefit, and 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 with the Wizards and the uh, the, the 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 center. Um, what is it? Of, what is the the Verizon Center? That area in downtown Washington was economically depressed. There was nothing there. Poland paid for what I was about to tell you is a Poland cut a deal with Marion Barry to 
to build it, and he built most of it. The city helped, and that whole area was transformed. Now, it hasn't been kept up, and it's still an economic generator in regard to small businesses, uh, restaurants, retail. I mean, that whole area was transformed. So you can't take that away. But A. Poland paid for most of that before he died. Here, I, I get what you're saying, but and I can't defend the Wizards because if you've seen their, that product, my goodness, I don't think they won 10 games. So them leaving the city would not be that big of a deal. But my point is the city's in a tough spot. Because on one hand, the fans who are in D.C. who love them, want them to stay and want to make it a night of entertainment. And that's the night of entertainment with the retail around it and so forth and so on. So there are arguments on both sides. Let me tell you how embarrassing this is for Leona's even more. When, when Mayor Bowser went to him, the Washington Post publishes, when Mayor Bowser went to him to present this $500 plus million dollar deal before him and Youngkin did a press conference the next day, he sat in his office, watched her present all of this, and then at the end of the presentation told her it was too late and denied he had a deal with Yunkin, but then went and did the press conference the next day. Yeah, because, the because his Post arrogant report, ass... It was really he, bad. His, it was his, because his arrogant ass thought right, he had right. a great $2 billion deal in Virginia, and Yunkin sold him on that. And if anybody pulled all the different stories, the economic, right. the economic report that was done uh, uh, was a joke. And, and see, the reason I despise these deals is because I covered City Hall in Fort Worth. I covered county government when I was in Austin. I covered this when I was in Dallas as well. And when Bruton Smith was looking to build a, t a motor speedway in Texas, he visited mm -hmm. Fort Worth, he visited Dallas, he visited Arlington, and I was one of the two City Hall reporters covering this whole deal. And the city of Fort Worth said, OK, here's the deal. We're not building you a stadium. Now, we will invest in the infrastructure, roads and things along those lines, partnering with the state as well. I believe it was about sixty five million dollars. But their whole deal mm -hmm. is you could because here's the deal. It, because the deal was they were not guaranteed any races. He was moving a race from one of his tracks. Their whole deal was trying to get two to two events. Now, granted, NASCAR tracks generate 250,000 people for event. You get two events, that's 500,000 people. That's the equivalent of damn near a whole NBA season. Who are spending money. Right, right. But but their whole deal is we're not going to be on the hook for taxpayers to, and because Bruton Smith was a billionaire. He owned tracks all around the country. So when they, so when they do these reports, Scott, and I've, and I've been a part of these. I've covered these. Mm -hmm. Do these reports say, well, well, here's the deal. If X number of people come in from out of town, they're going to stay in hotels. They're going to spend money in restaurants. They're going to do all this sort of stuff. But then when you actually break it down, folk ain't coming in from out of town in significant numbers. So all of these economic reports, they're well, wait a minute, Roland. That, that's not true. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but that's not necessarily true. Yes, it is. You got people coming from out of town in Maryland and Virginia to come to D.C. No, 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 Scott, the cap, Scott, Scott, the they, all no, the Scott, time. Scott, you missed what I said. When they put these economic reports together, they're lying. What they do is they say X number of people are going to come in from out of town, stay in hotels, all of that. People who are coming in from Virginia and Maryland, you, yeah. got, you got tickets to the Wizards game. When they played the Rockets, yeah. you gave me two tickets. I drove my ass from my place in Northern Virginia to the game and drove back home. I didn't book no hotel. I didn't go to the restaurants. And so the problem is, and when it comes to these deals, and, and economists and other people have done them, these deals are massive failures nationwide for numerous cities, wait, and they're always wait, wait, great wait, wait, wait. for the owners wait, and the leagues. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, but then yeah, tell me this. If I was to follow, if I was the mayor of the city, and I was to follow your analysis, and you say it's a complete failure, let them build it, blah, blah, blah. Are you, are you, if they do that, then the city benefits immeasurably from that stadium and that team being there and the community and the individuals who attend those games, they benefit. Why shouldn't the city pay their fair share minimally because, no, under your analysis? No, no, because here's the deal. 
Typically, in most of these cases, the city is giving the owner the land. Typically, yeah. they're, typically they're giving them a massive, massive deal, tax cut. Uh, deal tax cut. They're giving them yeah. a massive deal when it comes to, oh, the city will own it, but you can lease it for a dollar for 99 years. And see, here's what happened. Leona's was like, oh, yeah, we out. And the city attorney said, um, come here. That, that's he, another he issue. Said, he said, you locked into he that said, lease. He said, come here. When we put the last improvements on the stadium, when we took it to the bondholders, y'all had to agree, well, you couldn't leave until 2037. Yeah, and so right. the owner, right. oh, right. and I showed it. And see, that's, that's what right. these teams do. So what they do is, it's the rosy announcement, the big old announcement. Oh, we're going to stay in the city for forever. <laughs> and then they go, oh, it's been 10 years, and our building is outdated, and we need new revenue streams. And there are other stadiums being built, and they got luxury boxes, and, and we need new revenue streams. Oh, so what are we going <coughs> to do? And what happened here was, what happened here, Rebecca, what they did was the media rights deals for sports teams is totally changing. And so Mark Cuban, for instance, sold the Dallas Mavericks to the folks uh, who own the Adelson family who own uh, the casino. And what, and what he said was <coughs> the game has changed. He said now it's a real estate deal. They're trying to get sports wagering in Texas. They hope to open a casino in Dallas and all the real estate around it. That's what Leonis was trying to do in Virginia. Oh, I want to control the 12 acres. Well, that deal got scuttled. And so now what they're going to do, they're going to expand. Well, they're going to expand them, give them additional space in the uh, what is it, park place, a city place, whatever. It's right next to the stadium. And so now Leonis is, oh, this is a great thing. We got more space to do things with. But let me be clear, Rebecca. Here's the real deal. In every case, when they get a new arena, the value of the team shoots up. And here's what we know. When Josh Harris bought the Washington Commanders for $6 billion, what does Snyder pay for him? Like $400 million? You now got small market NBA teams that are selling for two. When, when Tillman Fertitta, hell, bought the Houston Rockets, he bought it for $2 billion. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. So if uh, you get an improved stadium or a new stadium. The Wizards, even though they suck, the value of the Wizards will double or even triple with that new arena. That's how they gain the system, Rebecca. Just like burgers isn't the business that McDonald's is into, McDonald's is in the real estate game. And you're right. It's the same way with um, professional sports and arenas. It's really not about the product as much as the land value, because we know when a new stadium goes into a place, there's a, there is hundreds of millions of dollars in critical infrastructure that is built around those new venues. But something I would like to push back at, Scott, that $500 million that Mayor um, Muriel Bowser promised um, to Leonis um, to, to fix up um, Capital One Arena, if they would have spent $500 million to make sure seven, eight, and nine-year-olds aren't committing crime in the city, if they use that $500 million to fix the housing oh. crisis in the city... Yeah. No, 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 don't be stopping on this, Scott. Don't stop on this, Scott. Let me take a problem with let me tell you the problem with progressive. No, 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 Scott, no, Scott, no, Scott, Scott, hold up, hold up, hold up, wait, 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 hold up, wait, hold up, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, time out, time out, time out, hold up, hold up, Scott, Scott and Rebecca, stop talking, Scott and Rebecca, stop talking, Scott and Rebecca, stop talking, Scott, stop talking, Scott, she asked you a question. You don't answer with my problem with no answer her question. If if the mayor had come out and announced they're going to spend five hundred and fifteen million dollars to improve the life of the residents of D.C., would people respond the same way as they are for giving it to a billionaire sports owner? Now you can answer. Well, wait a minute. They wait. Mayors of cities can walk and chew gum at the same time. They just came out with a new anti-crime initiative that's worth more than $515 million to make the residents that safe. That wasn't her question. Now, 
Well, I'm telling you, and yes, that that is that a they don't respond just the same because they want to live safe and feel safe. feel safe. That's what I'm saying. What are you talking That's about? And the part of the 515 million. Okay, read the deal. Hold on one second. Hold on, hold on one second. One second. People cannot hear both of you. Rebecca, finish your comment. Then, Scott, you will talk without being interrupted. Rebecca, finish the comment. Go ahead. So this is what my overarching point is, is that if we want to encourage more people to actually spend more money in D.C., actually go to restaurants, then reduce the crime in D.C., just putting a facelift on the Capital One arena, that by itself is not what's, what's going to get more people, especially in, from across the bridge in Virginia or um, across the counties in Maryland, to actually spend more money in D.C. I will say personally, me and a lot of people who I associate with, we're less likely to spend money in D.C. restaurants now, in part because we know our cars can get jacked because we know that seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven year olds are still in cars. We also know that with the um, uh, with the new criminal reform package, the legislation that the uh, DC Council and the mayor has signed off on, most of the DC advocates do not support it. They think it's bad, just like most of the um, criminal um, legal uh, criminal justice advocates in Atlanta thinks Cop City is bad. It's the same thing here. Just because it's a black mayor. Um, advocating for it doesn't mean that it's good for the black community. But my okay. second point was one of the reasons why Leonis wanted to push this to Northern Virginia, the reason why Yunkin wanted it to go to Northern Virginia, for the viewers who may not know this, Amazon HQ2 was it, it headed to that part of Northern Virginia. Unfortunately, Amazon, once they got certain tax cuts, they actually went back and decided, hey, we're not going to build and spend as much money in development the way we said we did. So now you have a whole area of land where there's already been hundreds of millions of dollars being spent in providing um, new luxury apartments for the new um, <laughs> Amazon employees. There's been a new um, metro subway station placed in that area. And so now there's a gaping hole that Youngkin was trying to fill because he was like, hey, so we were promised to do this with one corporation. The corporation reneged. Let's figure out if we could cut a deal and get another large corporation, i.e. Monumental Sports, to do something here. Okay, but Rebecca, Scott, the second ahead. part, the second part, the second part of what you're talking about is the art of the deal. Okay, so what? The first part of your analysis, and see, this is the problem with progressive liberals like you. You don't understand the business concept liberal. and the balance between city and businesses in that relationship. So let me tell you two things that, that Mira Bosler has done, who is a progressive liberal but a pragmatist, right? One, they pass a new crime bill that's going to make the city safer, hopefully, that includes a continuum of care for, for, for kids who are carjacking and doing all the, a lot of the bad stuff. But secondly, the $515 million, which is a, a, the crime being around that area, around the stadium, that's a huge issue. Part of that $515 million is to make those areas safer and to give kids incentives not to go out and commit crimes. So you can walk and chew gum, and you have to if you're the mayor. So I don't necessarily disagree with you. I'd love for our, to spend a half a million or half a billion on kids and, and poverty and making poor people the working class or middle class. I completely agree with you. But it, it, it's expensive taking care of poor people and rising them up. Most cities don't have the money to do it, so you partner with the business community, whether it's the Verizon Center or whether it's the Wizards or what have you. Really? But people got to feel safe. Black and brown and so, white people so, got to feel safe in this city, and you've got to do law enforcement so, at a high level to reduce crime. So, Robert— now, Why do you interrupt me, Robert? Well, first of all, because, because, you're, you're, at your, because, one, because, really because you're at your— Because, one, because you're at your conclusion. That's first of all. No, so, I'm not. Yes, you One are. More thing. Yes, I'm saying One more thing. I'm saying you concluded your argument. Now, Robert, here's what's interesting. You, li <laughs> you listened to all of that dribble from Scott. Go to my iPad. Dribble. This is a story from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Should cities pay for sports facilities? Now, let yeah. me let me scroll down here because uh, I'm going to show you uh, how uh, what Scott said is completely nonsensical. This That's is what I, 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 That's I, I am talking. Economic impact studies also tend to focus on the increased tax revenues cities expect to receive in return for their investments. The studies, however, often gloss over or outright ignore that these facilities usually do not bring new revenues 
into a city or a metropolitan area. Any student of economics knows that households have budget constraints that are binding, which means that families have only so much money to spend, particularly on entertainment. If the family chooses to spend the money at the ballpark, for example, then those funds cannot be spent on other activities. Thus, no new revenues are actually being generated. Then, here's what's interesting. Very little evidence exists to suggest that sporting events are better at attracting tourism dollars to a city than other activities. More often than not, tourists who attend a baseball or hockey game, for example, are in town on business or are visiting family and would have spent the money on another activity if the sports outlet were not available. Now, check this out. Economist, economist Roger No, you can shake your head all day, Scott, but this is a fact. Economist, econo- economist Roger No and Andrew Zimbalis have examined the issue in depth and argued that, as a general rule, <coughs> sports facilities attract neither tourists nor new industry. A good example, once again, is Oriole Park at Camden Yards. This ballpark is probably the most successful at attracting outsiders since it is only 40 miles from the nation's capital. Where Now, this, at the time, there was no Major League Baseball team. So, actually, this number is even worse because now you have the Nationals here. Noel and Zim, it says, it says about a third of the crowd at every game comes from outside the Baltimore area. Noel and Zimbalist point out that, quote, even so, the net gain to Baltimore's economy in terms of new jobs and incremental tax revenues is only about $3 million a year, not much of a return on a $200 million investment. Robert. Well, Roland, you can even take that. You can expand that out. Just look at RFK Stadium right now. A multi-billion dollar development right there in Washington, D.C., where the Redskins played for, you know, a generation. How's that neighborhood looking around RFK Stadium? Was it this economic driver that turned that area into a magical paradise where everyone is walking on the streets of gold? Um, look at Sochi, where the Olympics took place. There are wolves living in that stadium now. Uh, look at Beijing, where they spent hundreds of billions of dollars on their opening, uh, opening uh, ceremonies. The Bird Cape Stadium that they used for that and many of the other stadiums have fallen into disrepair that have actually become environmental hazards taking place. Look at Rio and Brazil, where they have the Olympics at, where their stadium has uh, uh, been reclaimed by the Amazon rainforest. Look at Atlanta, where we have the Olympics at, where the stadium then became the Brave Stadium and now Georgia State Stadium. Stadium economics have never made sense. Indeed, that exact same public investment that you will put into building these new stadiums, if you put it into an airplane and just dropped it out the back for people to pick up off the ground, would spur more economic uh, activity than building a stadium. If you just sent everybody in the neighborhood around the stadium, you know, fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars that you would st- uh, spend for them on behalf of the stadiums, then also fix the streets like you'll do for the stadiums and build new retail spaces like you do for the stadium, you'd have way more economic activity than actually building the stadium itself. These are vanity projects for billionaires so they can invest in something they know has a stable return and that will double, triple. This this is better than casino money, um, buying a sports team at this point in time. This is why you're seeing so many athletes and rappers become minority stakeholders in uh, in these projects because you invest $500 million in it and then 10 years later you get $10 billion out of it. You don't get that kind of return anywhere on earth, but the fact is the taxpayers don't get that same return and when things go bad, just as you just mentioned with Camden Yards, you end up with a very nice stadium with people are scared to walk inside because Harbor Place oh, is right next to you, completely oh, abandoned. And you, and you have kids roving the streets and, ro- and right there at the Capital One Arena where the Wizards play. There are you know, homeless people and drug addicts roving, roaming the streets, so nobody wants to go into the damn stadium. So it would be better just to fix the problem Bro. that existed instead of investing that money in the stadium and still keeping the same problem outside of it. So I'm going to go back. I'm going I'm, 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 Hold on, hold on, Scott. Scott, Scott, excuse me. Hold on. I'm going to go back to this, Scott. So this is the question again. This is very basic. Why, if if, if the team controls the arena and they get the money from the concerts and other events and all those things, why not say, hey, you privately finance it. You, if you, if you're going to get the parking, you're going to get the parking revenue. You're going to get, you're going to get the concessions. You're going to get all of that sort of stuff. Hey, privately finance it. Now you're in the control. Why? Why? Why can't they privately finance? 
Be because every deal is different, first of all. And, and when you talk about the concessions, in many of these deals, the concessions are shared with the city. But, but, but here's what you're missing. The economic analysis of these stadiums is, is, is you can't narrowly say what the stadium produces or doesn't produces outside guests and what people spend at the stadium. The economic engine of a stadium mm -mm. is its impact in two areas. Mm -mm. What happens around it, one, and job development and creation around it. But secondly, and most importantly, are the incredible tax revenues mm. generated from mm -hmm. those sales tax and from that stadium and from the team being there. And cities are looking at that because they need multiple sources of the income. Freeze right so there. Free, hold up. Freeze right there. Narrow. Nope. Freeze right there. Yeah, yeah. Get, that's good enough. Freeze, freeze right there. Actually, it's bad. Here's why. That's, that's good enough. No, no, actually, it's bad. No, it's bad. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Scott, Scott. Didn't D.C., when they had the last refurbishing of Capital One Arena, didn't they take out bonds? Yeah. Right, wait, 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 wait. Is D.C. still paying on those bonds? I think the Wizards, wait, based no, on the revenue no, 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 wait. paying on those no, no, bonds, yeah. No, no, is the, the, See, the no, 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 let me show you, let me show you. Let me show you what I'm talking okay, about. Go on. Because here's what happened. Had, had, had Virginia done this deal... And the Wizards bounce. Guess who would still be paying those bonds with no team? DC. Let me take you to Houston. Yeah. Go to my I, go to my iPad. Yeah, when, I agree with when, you. When, when Harris County, when Harris County did a deal to refurbish the Houston Astrodome to keep Bud Adams from leaving, they took out bonds. Well, guess what? They left anyway. And so this is a story from 2010 in the Houston Chronicle. This is what it says. More than a decade after its professional football and baseball teams moved out, the Astrodome carries as much as $32 million in debt. Harris County, which owns the stadium, projects that it will take another generation to complete the $48 million in debt <coughs> and interest payments to get it off the books. Now, but that's what, anecdotal. No, and no, 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 no Scott, Scott, that's not anecdotal. Here's what happened. What happened was a sports team owner said, if I don't get a refurbished stadium, I'm going to move my team. And so the elected officials, oh, we don't want them to leave. You know, let's refurbish the Astrodome. What happened? He stuck around for a few more years, and he took off for the money in Nashville. And guess what? Stuck the taxpayers with the bonds and the interest payment. And that's my point. If these, hey, hey, teams, if I, if these teams want to build stadiums, <coughs> build that shit yourself. And you know what's okay. happening. And hold up. And you know what's happening in the NFL? Because there been a, there's been a massive backlash of these type of deals. Guess what? Most of the, mo the most recent stadiums in the NFL, they have been built because they have been privately financed because of this very issue. Bottom line is this here. What Louise Lucas did in Virginia is right. And she said point blank. I'm not going to believe those rosy forecasts of, oh, all of the economic development is going to come flowing in. She was like, we're not going to stick Virginia taxpayers with the bill. You're a billionaire. Roland, Pay for it yourself. OK, you got 20 lean seconds. In. You got 20, 20 seconds, seconds. Final comment. Roland, lean in. No, nope. you're so right. If you're so right, then why do most cities and states still Partner Easy. With I'll tell you why. And, I'll tell you why. Hold on. Hold on. No, no. Partner hold on. That only takes five seconds. You're so right. I'll tell you why. So I'll lawyers, tell you why. Like you. It's ego. <laughs> it's because no, Whatever. no, it's the ego. Whatever. No, no mayor, no mayor wants to have it in their obit. They let our team leave town. Exactly. And guess what? So you got that, to live with No, no, with no, your actually, you don't have to live with a damn thing. And that's why you I'm glad. And, and that's kids. why I'm glad. And Louise Lucas they go said, hell no to the stadium. And I hope more people around the country but, tell these billionaire owners, build your own damn stadium.